How's it going guys? This is Chris Calder for musicdevelopments.com, the creators of Rapid Composer. This tutorial video is going to cover the chord rules editor, which is new as of version 2.7. To explain what the chord rules editor is, I'm going to read a little bit from the manual text. The chord rules editor allows you to set up a set of rules regarding chord probability for the new chord suggestions feature, which suggests chords based on the rules you create. They can adhere strictly to music theory and songwriting probability, or they can completely break traditional music theory rules if you'd like. Sounds complicated, but it's actually very easy to use. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, we're going to click New Rules. We're going to call this whatever you want. I'm going to call this Favorite Pop Chords. I'm going to hit Enter. So we have a Starts With and an Ends With. Starts With should always be Chord 1. So I double click that red box with the question mark and I put the letter I, Roman numeral I, because the program is asking you for scale degree notation only. And that's the Roman numeral system, or in America sometimes we call it the uh, Nashville number system. Uh, if you don't know much about this, what diatonic harmony is, diatonic chords, uh, look into it, because um, you have to know that in pop music the first six chords are based on the first six notes of the major scale. You know, so the first note of the scale is the tonic, and we call that chord one, and the second note of the scale is chord two, and that's minor, chord three is minor, chord four is major, chord five is major, chord six is minor. So assuming you know about this stuff, uh, let's, let's assume that you do. So we're going to put chord one in the starts with, and then ends with, we're going to put chord five. And the reason why I choose chord five, Roman numeral V, is because uh, chord five is often the last chord of a chord progression, especially in pop music, because it's something in music theory called the dominant tonic relationship. Basically, when you hear a dominant chord, aka chord five or chord V, uh, your ear just naturally leads you to chord one. This is a classical thing that has been tried and true for hundreds of years. And it's just smart to do that. So we'll do starts with chord one, ends with chord five, all right, to start. This plus sign is going to create a column called the source chord column. So basically, we could put as many chords in the source chord column as we want. So let's do that. All right. Chord I or chord one, here's chord two, here's chord three, here's chord four, here's chord five, here's chord six. I'm going to keep it really simple. If you know a little about chord theory, chord one can basically go anywhere. So I'm going in numerical order, filling in every chord diatonically because from chord one you can go anywhere you want so we'll use the main six chords of the major scale and the only thing is we can't put chord one because it's already on the left side it says chord cannot be the same as the source chord so right click delete chord cool so right here chord two in jazz chord 2 is often followed by chord 5. So we're just going to keep that the only, you know, the, the only chord that it can go to, right? Uh, chord 3. This can go anywhere. We'll try chord 6. I don't know. Chord 5. Um, chord 4. I went out of order with these chords, and, it, and the program actually put them in numerical order, which is really cool. So chord four can most commonly go back to chord one or to chord five, you know, chord six too, it doesn't matter. This is just basic songwriting theory. Chord five oftentimes wants to go back to chord one. And it can also go anywhere else it wants, chord six if it wants, chord four. Again, the program's gonna put these in numerical order, one, four, and six, that was cool. Uh, now, these 
you know, you could see the little turquoise or green, you know, and black bar. That's basically a 50% probability. So you can drag those sliders and make them as, uh, you know, a low percentage or a high percentage. So obviously, from chord five, you can go to chord one almost all the time. It's like almost 100% going to go back to chord one, even if it's not at the end of the sequence. So we're going to bump up that probability to like 100%. Chord four, yeah, it's pretty pretty common too, maybe there. Chord six, I don't know, probably 100%, you know, uh, or just knock it back a little bit. And then from chord six, probably chord four is the most common, and chord five is also a possibility. So I'll bump up the slider of chord four, you know. So basically, your goal is to create a starting chord, an ending chord, scale degree, okay, Roman numeral, and down the left side, again, is, is the uh, source chord column. So it's basically like whenever it, whenever the program says, you know, like, hey, chord one, where can I go from here? It can go to those five chords, 50% probability. So it doesn't matter. Chord two, we're, we're restricting that, that if chord two is in the sequence somewhere, chord five is immediately going to follow it, okay? Um, with chord three, if there's a chord three in the sequence, there's a probability of these three chords, okay? Uh, chord five, you know, 100% probability going back to chord one as the following chord. Hopefully you understand a bit about how the chord rules editor works. It's very involved, but it's also very simple. And you can use traditional music theory rules, or you could do whatever you want. You know what I mean? You could just break the rules and make it atonal or dissonant, whatever you want to do. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm just using a basic pop formula, you know, start with chord one, end with chord five. Um, chord one can go anywhere, chord two, you know, most commonly there, it's like a jazz, little jazz theory. So, you know, we got this. So basically, uh, you know, there's our set, it's good. Um, so now let's put this into practice. So this is a new composition, and we're going to use our chord rule set that we created, and we're going to use chord suggestions based on it. Um, when you start a new composition, uh, the default rule set is something that music development's made called Default Major Scale Rules. It's a great chord rule set. You can do a lot with it. But for this video, I am going to use Favorite Pop Chords, the one that I created in the previous video. So all you do to get to the chord suggestions is you left click the chord in the timeline. It's a uh, chord one on bar one. So I click this arrow right here. These are the chord rules that I made in my set. From chord one, we can go to these five chords. Um, now you can keep chord preview on if you want, or you don't have to, but if, if you want it on, we could do this. Just listen to each, each one of them. Now let's go with chord five, right? Now remember, I told the program that the next chord is likely going to be chord one, which is why it's at the top of the list, because that has the highest probability. So in this chord suggestions window, if you drag these sliders, you know, uh, left or right to lower percentage or higher percentage, the the most likely chord will be at the top the top of the column. All right. So these are just all basically you know in whatever order because everything's a fifty percent probability. But this next one, because I told after chord five, I wanted chord one 100% probable. So there it is. It's like, hey, you should go to chord one. But what if I don't want to? What if I want to go to chord four instead? Cool. So I click for the next suggestion, and it's giving me chord five, chord six, or back to chord one. So maybe I'll end the sequence with chord five. So that's how it works. Um, it's not rocket science, but it's a really cool feature of the program. Or, you know, if you want to just pick the chord the old school way, you can right click and it brings up the chord, uh, you know, the chord browser, and that's always really useful. So, again, you know, you could use chord suggestions if you want by clicking left. So, we could preview what the chord progression sounds like with a phrase. I chose finger picking, uh, just the default finger picking generator. Which is cool, and it's fine, and it sounds pop, and that's great. But 
let's use one of the uh, music developments rules, okay? Let's do Bach harmonic minor scale rules. Let's see. Start with the minor one. What does it suggest next? The major five. And the highest probability, the minor one again. And the last chord, major five or the minor four. So we use the Bach harmonic minor chord rule set, and this is what we got. Already infinitely more interesting because it's based on classical theory. Very cool, very cool feature of the program. So I hope you guys like this video, and I will see you next time.